Check out FlipsideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. From March 13th through March 17th, 2020, Flipside Gaming is holding their St. Patrick's Weekend Sale. During this time, when you use the promo code HEROES instead of the normal 10% off orders over $10, you will get 15% off. From March 1st through March 31st, 2020, if you use this promo code, you will automatically be entered into a drawing to win a WPN Mystery Booster Box. Also, there's another way to enter where no purchase is necessary. See the link in the description below for full details. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and the Legends. Welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. Really strange time right now for the market. It feels like as a whole, the market is retracting more than it is growing. So why is this happening? There's a number of reasons. First off, remember Mystery Booster Packs came to WPN stores on Friday. There's a ton of reprints in that set, so that's going to soften up a lot of cards. Also, there's a lot of reprints on the horizon. We found out yesterday, in fact, that there's going to be a lot of secret layers coming out in June. We don't know what those cards are yet. And beyond that, because of the state of the world, there's no big tournaments being played. So you don't have people buying cards to play in those tournaments or buying cards at the tournament. And also, you don't have people looking at deck lists from those tournaments to decide what they want to play at home. So because of all that, I think you'll see a lot of cards continue to soften, with some exceptions. Quick reminder before we get started, though, if you go over to FlipSideGaming.com right now through Tuesday, if you use the Heroes promo code on orders over $10, instead of the normal 10%, you'll actually get 15% off. And there's a lot of good stuff out there on the website right now. Theros Collector Boosters, Ikoria Draft Boosters, they have the complete set of the Ikoria Commander decks. So if you were thinking of picking something up, you might want to check it out. You could find a good price there. And whenever you use that promo code, it does support the channel, which is always appreciated. So thank you. And without any further ado, Let's get into it. We'll begin as we always do with standard. Today, looking at the top 11 standard legal cards that have lost value this week. Coming in at number 11, the Royal Scions, down 48 cents to 701. You'll find this in Grixis Sacrifice, which is not a super popular deck right now in standard, but it is gaining some momentum. In modern, many times this does show up in Death Shadow builds and some other places, but when you look at the total amount of play the card is seeing, $7 still feels a little expensive for it. I do think it's going to lose a little more value before it stabilizes. Number 10 is Arclight Phoenix, down 48 cents to 781. Remember, there were extra copies of this in the marketplace because this was included in the 2019 Challenger deck Arcane Tempo. Beyond that, though, the main reason this card is going down in value is because it's just not seeing a lot of play. Virtually no play right now in standard. Very little Pioneer in modern play. The banning of Faithless Looting in modern really cut this card out of the format for the most part. Number 9 is Clothies God of Destiny, down 51 cents to 615. Remember, Theros Beyond Death packs are still being cracked at a very high rate. Not only the draft packs, also the collector boosters. This card is actually seeing a fair amount of play. In standard, it's in Gruel Aggro, sees a little pioneer play. In modern, it could show up in Gruel Midrange or Teamer Midrange and some other places there. Legacy, even, you'll find a copy sometimes in the sideboard of Four Color Loam. And it's a good Commander and Brawl card, too. This may stabilize sooner than later. Number 8 is the first stomping ground, the one from Guild Pact. It goes down 59 cents to 18.56. Always good to keep track of those original copies. Sometimes they do foreshadow what some of the reprints could be doing in the future. Now, this is going down because there was a copy of the Ravnica Allegiance version in the Savage Hunter Brawl deck, and there's a lot of those in circulation right now, but this is still a great card, obviously. Teamer Adventures, Jun Sacrifice play this in Standard, it sees Pioneer play, in Modern it's in some big decks like Jund and Dredge and more. Number 7 is Absorb, Ravnica Allegiance down 51 cents to 548, Invasion down 68 cents to 1050. Still seeing play in Azorius Control in Standard, although percentage of play on that deck is down a little bit right now. Pioneer, this really isn't seeing as much play as it was seeing. Many of the Azorius Control decks have been dropping it recently. Number 6, Idyllic Tutor, the one for Morning Tide. It goes down 70 cents to 1618. Obviously, this has been very soft because of the reprinting in Theros Beyond Death at Rare, but this does sometimes see some Pioneer play in Fires builds, and it's always been a good commander, and now Brawl card for enchantment heavy decks. Number 5 is Cavalier of Thorns. It goes down 80 cents to 1051. This card is seeing a little standard play, but it has dropped off a lot. Same is true in Pioneer. You might see this in Mono Green Ramp there. But for the most part, it's seeing a lot less play than it was seeing. I do think this is going to lose more value. Number four is Questing Beast. It goes down 88 cents to 13.83. You'll find this in Gruel Aggro and Standard. Again, not a super popular deck, but it is hanging around. Pioneer, there's some decks that run a copy of this in the side, or sometimes a copy in the main. 
Mono Green Walker, Saltite Delirium, Niptolite, and more. Modern in the Rock, there's typically a copy of this in the main. This even shows up from time to time in Legacy decks. But just because it shows up in a lot of places doesn't mean it's showing up in a lot of quantity. Because of that, I do think it's going to lose more value. Number three is Bristling Boar, down $1.11 to $0.94. Cents. This is the one from Core Set 2020. Kind of a weird card to get a hold of, especially online. It was not in draft booster packs. You could find one copy of this in the green welcome deck. Those welcome decks are given out to new players at game stores to get them interested in the game. And most of the time, you don't have people breaking them up to sell them online. So you had some weird price anomalies going on with some of these cards. This one is finally relaxing a little bit. Number two, similar story with Woodland Mystic down $1.50 to $3.10. Now this one's a little more expensive, still too expensive, but it is going down. You can only find one copy of this in the Corset 2020 Green Welcome deck as well. But the difference between this card and the previous one, this has not been printed anywhere else, at least at this time. So it is at least unique. Number one is Breeding Pool. It goes down $1.67 to $35.80. This is the original one from Dissension. And another one goes up later in the video, so I want to read too much into this. I think this is just a situation where they're trying to find their price point as metas are shifting. Especially this Dissension one has been pretty turbulent. You'll find this in Team Room Reclamation, Bant Midrange, more decks in the standard format, Pioneer, it's in some big decks like Bant Spirit, Salty Delirium, and more. Modern with the banning of Once Upon a Time, maybe some of the decks like Amulet Titan won't be quite as good, but I don't think that's really going to slow down this card all that much. It will still see a lot of play in that format. Okay, onto your top six standard legal cards that have gained value this week. Coming in at number six is Vivian Arcbow Ranger, up 57 cents to $11. This one was losing a lot of value because it hasn't done a whole lot in standard this season, and that hasn't changed, still not doing a whole lot there. But in Pioneer, Mono Green Walkers typically runs four of this in the main, and that is a deck that has gained a lot of momentum recently. It can show up in some other places in that format too, and can even see a little modern play as well. Number five is Heliod's Intervention, up 60 cents to 280. This card is gaining momentum. It's seeing more standard sideboard play. You'll find it a lot of times in sideboards like Azori's Control, Jeskai Fires, Bant Midrange, and more. It's also good in Brawl and Commander Life Gain decks, and I have seen a lot of chatter about just speculating on this card in general for the future. Number four is Divine Visitation. It goes up 72 cents to 11.32, really moving because of Commander this week. It is a fantastic Commander card in the right builds, and one of those right builds is the Rees the Redeemed deck. And of course, Rees just got reprinted in Mystery Boosters. I don't think that's a coincidence. Number three is that other breeding pool. This is the one from Ravnica Allegiance. It goes up 89 cents to 24.45. Number two is Hollowed Fountain, but it's the one from Dissension, up $1.05 to $26.80. This card was losing value for a little bit because there was a copy of the Ravnica Allegiance version of the card in one of the Brawl decks, again, this time the Wild Bounty one. But now this card is already starting to recover a little bit. It's in Azori's Control, Jeskai Fires, Bant Midrange, and more in Standard. Pioneer, it's in Spirits Builds, Azori's Control, and more there. And in Modern, of course, it's going to see play there too, like all the Shocklands do. Number one is Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, up 213 to 4235. I really thought last week this card would start to settle down a little bit, but it climbs quite a bit. I do think this time, though, for real, it's got to be close to stabilizing, just because of the amount of packs that are being opened. The card is good, though. It's in Bat Midrange, Salt Eye Midrange, and more. Pioneer, you'll find this in Salt Eye Delirium, a very popular deck. Also in Niv to Light. Lots of modern play, too, but maybe a little bit less in the future now that Once Upon a Time is banned in the format. Sees Legacy play on top of all that, and it's a good Commander and Brawl card as well. All right, on to Pioneer in your top seven Pioneer legal cards that have lost value this week. Coming in at number seven is Supreme Verdict from Iconic Masters. It goes down 84 cents to 1642. Now, the main reason this card is going down is because it was reprinted in Mystery Boosters. Granted, those convention edition Mystery Boosters have been circulating for a while now, but nothing compared to the amounts that are being opened of the WPN version this weekend. So you're going to see a number of cards, not just in the video today, but just across the board that are losing value because they are part of that set. This is just one of them. But this is still a great card. You're going to find this in Azorius Control, Lotus Breach, and more in the format. Modern Band Snowblade, Azorius Control, and more decks there too. Sees Legacy Play, and it's a big Commander card. Number six is Thoughtseize. This is the one from Iconic Masters, going down 87 cents this week to 34.73. Again, we have a situation where the card's trying to find its price point. We have another copy going up, which you'll see in just a few moments. And this card is going to continue to see a lot of play. It's in Demir Inverter. Now, that's a deck a lot of people were worried could see a banning this week. Didn't happen. 
Mono Black Aggro also runs this. This is a modern staple, as you know, and it sees lots of legacy play too. Number five is Mutavolt from Magic 2014. It goes down 92 cents to 2403, just retracting off some recent spikes. Sees a lot of play in the format again. Mono Black Aggro, Is It In Soul, Mono Red Aggro, and much more. Also, this is a good card in tribal commander builds. Number four is Thassa God of the Sea from Theros. It goes down $1.05 to $17.99. Here's another card that was recently reprinted, this time in a secret layer. You can find a copy of this in Theros Stargazing Volume 2. And that's a big part of the reason the card is soft right now. Another big reason, though, is because it didn't really perform in Pioneer like a lot of people expected. Many players, even pros, thought that the Mono Blue Devotion deck was going to be a lot better. Sees virtually no play now. Beyond that, though, pay attention to this card long term because in Commander it's great with Yuriko the Tiger Shadow, which is a card that just got reprinted in Mystery Boosters. Number three is Kulligan's Command from Dragons of Tarkir. It goes down $1.24 to $17.48. Wow, this card has been very popular for a long time. Not so much in Pioneer, it's more of a modern card, but it's been very good there. You'll find it in Jund, Death Shadow builds, and more. Why is it going down this week? Because it was reprinted in Mystery Boosters. Number two is Silence from Magic 2011, going down $1.32 to $6.06. Now, this card does see a tad bit of Pioneer play out of sideboards, but it's really been modern and legacy that has driven the price recently. And that leads me to why it's going down in value. I think the main reason is simply because the card is retracting off those big spikes. But also, there's some other things at play here. In Legacy, we have the banning of Underworld Breach that's definitely taking momentum away from this card. When it comes to Modern, Creative Mining, that was the main reason this card spiked to begin with. That deck really, even though it's still kicking around, isn't putting up any big notable results right now. That could change, though. It also doesn't have an opportunity to really showcase itself again because we don't have any big tournaments coming up in paper, and that could put this card in limbo for a while. Beyond all that, don't underestimate the fact that this is a card that is seeing play in competitive commander decks, and that includes the Notorious Sushi Hulk deck, which is driving a lot of card prices right now and has been for a number of weeks. This is one to keep an eye on and just kind of see what happens. I think in the short term it could lose more value, but maybe in the long term it could start to go back up again. Number one is Kalidus, Trader of Gats. It goes down 296 to 3209. Pretty big drop considering this card is seeing a lot of play, but it has been spiking a lot recently, so maybe it's not too surprising. You'll find this in Demir Inverter, which did not get hit with a banning. Card's still going down in value, though. This is also in Mono Black Aggro, Salt Eye Delirium, Mono Black Vampires. Sees a little modern play in sideboards and sees some commander play, too. All right, on to the top nine Pioneer legal cards that have gained value this week. Coming in at number 9 is the card that missed that bullet. It's Inverter of Truth. It goes up $0.69 cents to six forty six. Obviously, this is doing really well in the Pioneer format in Demir Inverter. But in Modern, this is seeing play now in Inverter's Grace, which is a modern version of that deck. Even in Vintage, this is sometimes an Oracle combo. Number 8 is the other copy of Thoughtseize I was alluding to. This is the one from Lorwyn. It lost a little value recently. Rebounds slightly up $0.71 cents to $40.23. Number seven is Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth, the original this time from Planar Chaos. It goes up 77 cents to 2304. Mono Black Aggro, Mono Black Vampires, and more will play this card. It's been pretty popular in Pioneer. See some modern and legacy play too, but it is a huge commander card as well. Number six, Archangel of Thune from Magic 2014. It goes up 81 cents to 2123. This is in Mono White Life Gain and has seen increased commander play recently with the new Heliod and Daxos. Number five is the Kama Primal Calamity. It goes up 86 cents to 2132. This one here because of Commander. It's a solid Commander card. Whether you're trying to combo off by ramping and then bouncing it and then replaying it, or if you just simply want to put this in a dinosaur tribal build. Number four is Ugin's Nexus. Okay, it goes up $1.09 to 190. So what is the story behind this card? Well, there is a new Pioneer deck out there. It was created by Aspiring Spike, who's had some success recently. And this is really starting to catch on. You saw a lot of streamers last week running this deck. It went 5-0 and on Magic Online, as a matter of fact. But it's a John Dexter Turns deck. It runs three copies of this in the main, one in the side. It uses this along with Karn the Great Creator and a number of sack outlets like Corval Faker's King to create a situation where you get a number of turns in a row. It seems like a fun deck. We'll have to kind of see ultimately if it can put up some big results long term. Number three is Knight of the White Orchid. Shards of Alara goes up 80 cents to 770. Dual decks, Knights versus Dragons up $1.17 to 579. This is seeing Pioneer play right now in Mono White Devotion and a few other decks too in the format. It's also seen increased commander play recently with Sir Gwyn, Hero of Ashvale. 
Number two, Cyclonic Rift from Commander 2014. It goes up $1.43 to twenty seven ninety nine. Now, this one is drying up in the marketplace. That's why this particular copy has been going up as much as it has recently. And sure, this does see a little Pioneer play in Simic Ramp sideboards. Sees a tad bit of modern play from time to time. But this is really all about Commander. This is one of the biggest Commander cards out there right now. And again, this week, it did get another mention on the Command Zone podcast. Number one, Nykthos Shrine to Nyx. It goes up $399 to $3189, another card that has been very hot recently. This is in Pioneer decks like Mono White Devotion, Mono Green Walkers, Mono Black Vampires, and more. Sees a little modern play, but again, we have another huge commander card here. Okay, time for modern with your top five modern legal cards that have lost value this week. Number five is Sakashima the Imposter from Saviors of Kamigawa. It goes down $201 to $30.05. This does see some commander play, but the reason it's soft this week is because it was reprinted in Mystery Boosters. Number four, Verdant Catacombs, the one from Modern Masters 2017. It goes down $224 to $65. Okay, so if you were living under a rock yesterday, you might not have heard, but the enemy fetch lands are being reprinted in a very expensive, very exclusive product going to game stores called Secret Layers Ultimate Edition. You're going to get one non-foil copy of each of the five enemy fetch lands. So, obviously, that was not received very well. However, something that got lost maybe in that message was later this year, there is going to be another Fetchland reprinting, not in a standard set, but somewhere else. And it's going to go to local game stores. That's all we know. I assume it's going to be in a supplemental product, maybe the Commander set that's coming out later this year. I don't know. Between the announcement of the initial product and the announcement of the future reprint, these are all starting to soften up. This one happens to be going down the most this week, but if you look at all the pricing on the various fetch lands, they are all starting to go down in value. Keep a close eye on them. It might not be time to pull the trigger yet if you want them, but sometime this year probably will be the right time. Number three, Liliana of the Vale, also from Modern Masters 2017. It goes down $239 to $60.97. This card stays soft, but it continues to see a fair amount of modern play. It's in Jund, which has been very popular. Rakdos on Earth, Mardu Pyromancer, and more. Number two, speaking of soft cards, Jace the Mind Sculptor. This is the one from Masters 25. It goes down 283 to 9698. I've said this in previous videos. I just think we're entering a new world where people aren't really comfortable spending a whole lot on modern cards like this because modern is losing some of its momentum due to Pioneer. People are still playing the format, but am I going to need to buy this for a hundred ish dollars? Maybe not. Maybe not anymore. So I do think these could continue to lose more value. But again, it is still seeing play. Bant Snowblade, Azorius Control, sometimes Demir Wurza, and more. Also sees Legacy play as well. And it's a decent Commander card too. Number one is Bloom Tender from Eventide. It goes down 348 this week to 5235. It's a huge Commander card. You all know that. But what you also know if you watch the Market Watch is this is part of Mystery Boosters as well. This saw an initial dip when the Convention Boosters came out. Then it started to recover. Now it's losing more value with the WPN Mystery Boosters. On to the top five modern legal cards that have gained value this week. Not all moving because of modern, but actually more moving because of modern than in recent history. So let's check it out. Number five is not one of those cards, though. It's doubling season from Modern Masters. It goes up $1.83 to $53.77. Another really big commander card here. And again, another card that plays really well with a card recently reprinted in Mystery Boosters, Riesler Redeemed. Number four, Stoneforge Mystic, up $1.94 to $37.98. Now, this one is moving because of Modern, and it is seeing a lot of Modern play, again, especially since the meta has shifted after those recent bannings. Now, this card has been on a financial roller coaster ride, but I do think it is going to gain a little more value before it stabilizes. You're going to find this in Bant Snowblade, which is a very popular deck right now, also Azorius Control, and a number of other decks in the Modern format running Stoneforge packages. This also sees Legacy play as well. Number three, Kozilek Butcher of Truth. This is the one from Ultimate Masters this time. It goes up 226 to 3492. And this is not seeing a whole lot of modern play or anything, but it does see a little legacy play in Mono Green 12 post. Also in Commander, it has seen increased play recently with Outlaw Plani Nest Tender and Nyx Bloom Ancient around. Number two is Sliver Legion. It goes up 355 to 8995. This card continues to be hot. It's a key card in Commander Sliver builds. It really started heating up with the reprinting of Sliver Overlord in the Killer Kaleidoscope Secret Layer. Number one is a card seeing modern play. It's Angel's Grace Time Spiral up at $1.73 to 1099. Modern Masters up 515 to 1387. This is in Inverter's Grace, gaining more momentum now in the modern format. Also, this is seeing play in Ad Nauseam alongside Thassa's Oracle 2. 
Commander, this is seeing increased play now with Thassa's Oracle and Underworld Breach. And one of the decks that it is seeing play in is Sushi Hulk. All right, that brings us to the Vintage Spotlight. Here we're going to talk about cards that are played in Legacy, Vintage, 93, 94, or cards that are just popular among collectors. Okay, I wanted to get started by checking in with our old friend Mox Opal. This card has been losing a lot of value since it was banned in Modern. Scars of Meriden, down 348 to 5730. Modern Masters 2015, down 476 to 5695. If you do want to pick up a copy of the card, I would do two things. I would continue to wait because I do think it's going to lose more value. And secondly, I would shop around because remember, on the Market Watch, we're always talking about average prices for, in this case, near mint cards. If you shop around, you should be able to do better than average, not just for this card, but any card we talk about. Beyond that, this is a good time to mention a lot of cards have been recently banned. So if you're looking to pick up any of those cards, stay close to the market. A lot of them are still losing value like this one. Mana Crypt. The media promo goes down 561 to 264.34. That's the original copy from the book giveaway back in the day. The Eternal Masters copy is down 1541 to 219.92. We've been talking throughout the video about mystery boosters and how those reprints have softened up cards. This is maybe one of the more extreme examples of that. So if you're looking to pick up one of these, I would wait a little bit longer, but stay really close to the market and shop around, find yourself a deal. We can't go over all the cards in the Market Watch that are losing value because of their reprinted mystery boosters. So again, if there's something from that set you want, pay close attention to the market in the coming weeks. All right, Sensei's Divining Top. This one's going up. Eternal Masters up a dollar fourteen to thirty nine ninety four. Champions of Kamigawa up a dollar ninety five to thirty six ninety seven. This is a great vintage card, but really, I think Commander's driving this one. It's another really popular Commander card. And it has seen more play recently with Elsha of the Infinite, Urza, and some other newer cards that have been around. Divining Witch, it goes up 224 to 371. So you have a card here that's pretty old, getting hard to find in good condition, it has yet to be reprinted, and it's doing well in Legacy right now. You're going to find three copies of this typically in the sideboards of Saltai Doomsday. Vampiric Tutor, the original one from Visions, goes up 291 this week to 69.73. Great vintage card and another tutor that is seeing increased play right now in Commander. Part of that is because competitive Commander is really starting to take off and become more popular, more mainstream. And like I've been saying in these videos, this doesn't just see playing Sushi Hulk, but I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't mention that that is the deck that a lot of people are trying to build right now. And that deck is driving prices big time. You're going to see more of it later in the video. All right, mountains are spiking this week. Just kidding. Just this one. This is from Magic Anthologies. It's kind of a white border printing of the Arabian Nights copy of Mountain. It goes up 294 this week to 1103, just drying up a little bit in the marketplace. There are people that like to pick these up though and fill their deck out with them. Next is Mana Vault from Ultimate Masters, another great vintage card and another big commander card. It goes up 314 to 4975. Force of Will from Alliances is hot again this week, up 402 to 9717. And this card sees play in Legacy, it sees play in Vintage, but maybe more importantly right now it sees play in Competitive Commander, including Sushi Hulk, but this also did get a Command Zone podcast mention this week. Next we have Survival of the Fittest from Exodus, it goes up 436 to 8880. This is on the reserve list, but it did get a reprinting as a Judge Foil before they closed that loophole on the reserve list. Obviously this is one of the key cards in Vintage Survival builds, but again, this is seen play in Commander, many times in Savala, Heart of the Wilds builds. This is also a card that can be found in Sushi Hulk 2, though. Next, we have Splinter Twin, Modern Masters 2015, up 403 to 1399, Rise of the Eldrazi, up 458 to 1348. All right, so what is the story here? Remember on Monday, we had the banned and restricted list update. Now, some people speculated that this card might become unbanned in Modern. It did not happen, but some people thought it could. Why is that driving prices like this even almost a week later? There's something bigger at work here. And that is the second side of the story, and that is the sellers. A lot of the sellers delisted this card prior to Monday. Why would they do that? Number one, let's say I'm a seller and I have a whole bunch of copies of Splinter Twin. Now, I'm not going to just put them on my website because not everyone's going to see my website. I might put some copies there, some on eBay, some on TCG Player. Ultimately, I'm going to list more inventory than I actually own because I need to get vision on this inventory. So if the card did become unbanned and I sold out everywhere, well, I would have a situation where I couldn't fulfill all those orders and I would have to cancel some and then I'm going to become that guy and that's not good for business. I'll be on all the Reddit threads, I cancel the orders, so on and so forth. Secondly, 
Guess what? Sellers want to sell these for the best price possible. If it happens to become unbanned, they'll relist it at a higher price. That way they're going to make more money. That's how they stay in business and that's how they continue to sell you cards in the future and not go away. So I think what you're seeing here is still a little bit of residual from that banned and restricted list hype from last week. But also some of the sellers just haven't relisted the cards yet. They haven't gotten around to it. That's why the price is kind of sort of stable right now. But I do think it's going to go back down very soon. All right, now we're going old school with Bizarre Baghdad on the reserve list, of course, up $150 to $1,350 this week. And finally, Unlimited Black Lotus, obviously on the reserve list. It goes up theoretically $3,219.98 this week to $17,499.97. If you watch these videos, you know that that's not accurate. What's happening is you have a card that doesn't sell a lot any given week because it's rare and expensive. So those big websites, they can't really track sales in this example. They have to fall back on what people are asking. And unfortunately, if somebody starts to ask a lot of money for a card, even if they're never going to get it, it can throw off the data. Sometimes people are just fishing for an offer. They put the card out there and they want to see what people want to offer for it. But it does throw off the stats, and that's what you're seeing here. If you wanted a lightly played Black Lotus from Unlimited, you should expect to pay closer to 9000 all right, time for that Commander Spotlight. Going to try to go sort of quick. A lot of cards on here again this week. Eric Smithies, Slumbering Isle. This goes up $1.04 to ten twenty-five. Some Theros Beyond Death cards have pushed this one a little in Commander. Serpent of Yawning Depths, Kiora Best the Sea God, Nadir Kraken, and more. Next is Transmute Artifact on the reserve list. It goes up $1.08 to one fifty-eight seventeen. Starting to slow down. This card was climbing a lot recently. It has seen more play recently with Urza, but has always seen a lot of play in the format. Sylvan Library from Eternal Masters goes up $1.09 this week to $43.09, and this is another huge commander card, especially in competitive commander decks like Sushi Hulk. This also sees Legacy and some vintage play too, though. Vesuva up $1.11 to $28.91. Solid commander card here, but I think this is moving more because of modern right now. This is in Titan builds, although those builds might get slowed down with Once Upon a Time being banned, and maybe this card sees less play in the coming weeks. In Legacy, you're going to find this in Eldrazi Post and some other decks there too, though. Forbidden Orchard. This is the one from Commander 2016. It goes up $1.13 to $14.49. Now, this one is a really big Commander card, and yes, you can find this in Sushi Hulk, but it also sees play in Vintage Oath of Druids builds. Mystical Tutor from 6th Edition up $1.14 to $12.18. Another card that sees play in Vintage, but also very popular right now, especially in Competitive Commander. And again, yep, you might find this in Sushi Hulk, along with basically a whole lot of other tutors. Thrumming Stone, this goes up $1.18 to $39.79. This card's been pretty hot recently because of the secret layer drop, Year of the Rat. That reprinted some key rats, so a lot of people decided let's go ahead and build that Commander Rat deck. And obviously this is going to play well in there with Rat Colony. Mox Diamond from Stronghold, up $1.21 to $2.8003. Still going up a little bit, not as much as it was. This is on the reserve list, but it was reprinted in From the Vault Relics and Foil again before they closed that loophole. It does see Legacy play, but it's another big commander and competitive commander card. And, yep, you could find this one in Sushi Hulk too. Contamination starts to dry up a little bit this week. It goes up $1.24 to $23.80. This does get some commander play, especially in Yawgmoth Thran Physician builds. Burgeoning, the one from Commander 2016 this week, it goes up $1.25 to $13.88. Another really big commander card here. And this has seen increased play with Dryad of the Elysian Grove. Edgar Markov, very popular commander if you like the Vampire Tribe. This can only be found in foil. It goes up $1.25 to $16.76 this week. Craterhoof Behemoth remains hot. Evanson Restored up $1.22 to $47.09. Modern Masters 2017 up $1.26 to $46.97. Sure, this sees a little modern play. It's in Legacy Elves, but again, it's really commander that's driving the price here. You're going to find this a lot of times with Reese the Redeemed, recently reprinted in Mystery Boosters, as you know by now. And also, this is seeing increased play with Nyx Bloom Ancient from Theros Beyond Death, because that card is pushing some of these big mana decks in the format. Ad Nauseam, up $1.27 to $20.93, seeing increased commander play right now with Thassa's Oracle and Underworld Breach being in the format. Also a card that you could find in Sushi Hulk, but Modern has a lot to do with this increase too. This is played with Thassa's Oracle there in Ad Nauseam decks, and the Seas play in Legacy Tendril Storm builds as well. Thought Lash on the reserve list. It goes up $1.30 to $10.21. Increased commander play recently, of course, with Thassa's Oracle. And it has seen increased Legacy play too because of that card in those Oracle Thought Lash combo builds. 
Worldly Tutor from 6th Edition, up $1.30 to nineteen fifteen. Like I've been saying, keep an eye on these tutors. With more people playing competitive Commander, these all could keep going up in value, no doubt. And that's not just about Sushi Hulk. A lot of competitive Commander decks will want these. Same is true of Enlightened Tutor from Eternal Masters. It goes up $1.35 to thirty three sixty two. Competitive Commander players are going to be interested in this. And sure, this could show up in Sushi Hulk as well. This also sees Legacy Plate too, though. Wheel of Fortune. It goes up $1.38 to ninety eight twenty seven, And this is the one from Revised on the reserve list. But it did get a printing one more time as a Judge Foil before, of course, that loophole was closed yet again. Now, this card has been losing a little value recently. It is rebounding a tad bit this week. Maybe this is a trend. We'll have to see the Unlimited copy, though, still going down quite a bit this week. Ultimately, though, this is a good Commander card, especially now with Thassa's Oracle and Underworld Breach in the format. You take those two cards alongside this, throw in Lion's Eye Diamond, you could win a game. Dream Halls from Stronghold on the reserve list. It goes up $1.43 to twelve eighty six this week. This is a case where the card's drying up in the marketplace more than anything, I think. It does see a little commander play, though, many times in Muldrotha the Gravetide builds. Hall of Gemstone. This is on the reserve list. It goes up $1.56 to $9. Seeing some increased commander play with Nyx Bloom Ancient pushing those mono green ramp builds a little bit. Bladesteel Colossus, another card that's good in big mana decks, along with Nyx Bloom Ancient. It goes up $1.59 to $59.38. And this also sees vintage play on top of the commander play that it's been seeing. Third verse, same as the first. This is another card that's seeing more play right now in Commander because of Nyx Bloom Ancient and the big mana builds. It is Ulamog, the Infinite Gyre. Rise of the Eldrazi goes up $1.21 to $29.78. Ultimate Masters up $1.71 to $30.61. Okay, so if you wonder why I keep bringing up Sushi Hulk, I know probably many of you are sick of hearing it by now. These top two commander cards are the biggest reason why. Timna the Weaver only can be found in foil. It goes up 361 this week to 2799. This card keeps climbing. It is one of the partner commanders for the most popular version of that deck. And our highest climbing commander card this week is Thrashios Triton Hero, up six dollars to thirty nine ninety nine. Only can be found in foil again, and this is the other partner commander in the most popular version of Sushi Hulk. So, like I've been saying in the video, competitive commander generally is on the rise, but this is the deck that keeps getting mentioned again and again, and I gotta talk about why the cards are going up in value. That deck is a big reason a lot of these cards are going up in value. Popper Spotlight time. Alright, let's talk about some cheaper cards that we can all afford, hopefully. Deprive up 10 cents to 205. This is seeing some popper play now in fairies and various control builds out there. See some modern play too. And it has seen a little increased commander play recently because of Dryad of the Elysian Grove. So this might not all be moving because of popper, but I do think popper is the main influence here. Red Elemental Blast from Masters 25. It goes up 58 cents to 193. Very, very popular popper sideboard card right now. Shows up in a lot of different builds. Also sees legacy and vintage play and a lot of commander play too though. All right, on to the premium spotlight, and as I say every week, I don't like to spend too much time on rare promos or foils because for the same reasons I talked about when it came to the Black Lotus a while ago, you could just get some bad data. If there's not a lot of cards for sale or being sold at any given time, you can get skewed data, you can get manipulated data. I'd like to avoid that whenever possible, but every week I do like to pick out one card that feels like it's moving naturally with the market, not being manipulated, and this week, I went with Crater Hoof Behemoth. The Modern Masters 2017 foil is going up 507 this week to 6510. The Avacyn Restored foil up 765 to 8304. So this is the type of increase that is going to stick a little better than some of these dramatic increases that you see on foils and promos. Sometimes on the market watch we see cards going up 30, 40, 50 dollars, but they do retract pretty aggressively. This will probably retract too, but I would anticipate that some of this spike will stick. All right, with that being said, that is the Market Watch for this week. Everybody stay safe out there, and until next time, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page, as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.